Hey everybody, it's Eva here from Essential Guide Digital Jewelry Design. Welcome back to our channel. Um, today I want to show you how to make a simple eternity ring using curves and pipes. Um, we're starting here with the ring size circumference. I use the circle curve tool and in my front viewport I use the circumference to um, put in a ring size of 54, that's European. If I do my diameter dimension, uh, it's 17.2, that's uh, generally the, the commonly accepted ring size. And I'm going to use my grasshopper gold to fetch a brilliant cut diamond. I will go with a three pointer in my drop down list. And that, that's all right. That's about the right size. Let's move that diamond up above the ring uh, ring size uh, uh, curve. And I'm going to move that diamond up a little bit higher. Let's move it a little bit higher. I'd like to put it about one millimeter away from the finger. Uh, just use the gumball tool here to... There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now what do we got here we we're going to create the seat of our diamond uh we, what we're going to do is we're going to um use two little o-rings as a seat and uh, four claws so i'm going to make a little um a little circle just below the diamond and with that circle curve i'm going to create pipe uh, and to create the claw we are going to just use the interpolated curve tool and draw uh, one straight curve just a, from the ring size from the finger to just above the stone that will move up to the northeast corner of the stone in our top view and we'll move the points uh, along that curve uh, to, to create the shape of the curve uh, and the claw, the shape of the claw. So let's move the bottom point down to the finger just below and then we'll move the second point down a bit more as well so that that will uh, be in line with the seat and let's get cracking with the pipes okay so here we go let's get the pipe from our solid tools and mm, but 0 0.35 in, in 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 radius would be a is a good size it's about 7.7 millimeters in diameter that's a good material size for the for the seat it's maybe a little bit too big and too low down so let's move it up until the stone is almost sitting inside that setting uh, the jeweler will then phrase material out of that seat before setting the stone so it's it's always good to have a bit more material than too little so you can see how the seat is actually cutting into the stone and that will be phrased away uh, when the ring is being manufactured. We're going to duplicate that and move that down, create the second the second seat of our setting. And uh, I'm going to move that just below the ring curve, uh, the ring finger curve. It's going to get cut away by the extrusion that we'll make at the end. And uh, let's measure our, there we go, this is 0 0.5 millimeters. This is about a half a millimeter gap between the two, that's good. And next thing we're going to do is create the claw. Okay, so let's pipe this and see what we've got. Also about uh, 0 0.35 in radius, it's the same thickness. And just going to use our history to change the position of that bottom point. I want that to be a little bit further out outside the setting okay go just inch it out a little bit and we'll take the points on the curve higher up 
and we'll adjust those two top one bring down the claw a bit and that one too and you can play around a little bit with the position of of your claws we're just going to use the polo array when we're done here to create the other three claws around the stone actually this tutorial should be called the curves pipe and polo array quick tip tutorial this is the only these are the only tools you'll need to create this ring so now we're going to polo array in the top view four claws there you go we've got the setting ready and it looks okay just have a look here maybe move that seat down a little bit make it a bit bigger um, okay and there we go bring it in a bit i'm going to group this together actually no, we're going to boolean this together okay so now we've boolean everything together we've got the setting all in one piece we're going to grab our stone and now in our front view we're going to create another polo array this polo this polo array will be uh, I'm just creating my layer I'm going to copy finally copy the objects into that second layer so I can keep the one original and, and the second one I can boolean together so here we go we've got 20 objects it's not enough they're not close enough so let's go back and change that to 22 objects now that's looking better we've got the material you've got the material close enough maybe one more 23 it's perfect okay we're going to stick with that 23 settings and stones and we'll just make the stones a bit smaller later um, and there we go there's your eternity ring almost done and let's have a look that everything's touching so we can do a good bullion and that in final 3d print run this will actually print without problems so let's just extrude that ring size curve that we had we're going to use that as our extrusion, as our boolean tool for the eternity ring. What we need to do though is we need to boolean, let's just check the setting is in the right position and make the stones a bit smaller. Um, now we are going to just have a look here, maybe move that setting out a little bit. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now, I'm just exploding that cylinder so I can have a look on the inside and see that this is properly placed, that we'll be cutting away the right round material. Now let's boolean all these settings together with the boolean union. There we go. That's my copied object. I still have the originals. I can go back and make changes if I need to. And this we're going to boolean difference with the ring size extrusion and there we go that's our finished ring this is print ready as well so you could literally just send this to the 3d printer and and uh, have it cast I'm just going to do a quick render here. Let's move those stones out a bit for the render. I'm going to use uh, some materials I created in Rhino already. Some PBR materials, metal, uh, stone and, and uh, uh, ground plane surface. Just assigning the material to my objects. And let's go to the ray traced viewport option in Rhino and that ground plane surface is looking a bit complex we're also not 
not having a good lighting here. Let's create a light layer and let's go into our lights and take the take the rectangular light, which is pretty much an area light in Rhino. We just draw a rectangular light out over our ring. Right now it's on the on the zero axis. We're just going to pull that up, pull that away a bit, and see how the shadow is changing, and rotate it a bit to create uh, an, our, our shadow at an angle. All right, and just position that light the way you want to create the mood you you're looking for. Uh, I'm going to go to that ground plane material and just take away that that bump map looking too complex and make that a bit darker got a nicer reflection that's uh, looking okay uh, yeah I think that looks all right maybe mm, don't know but we could add another light let's see mm. Checking my material thicknesses again, make sure. And yeah, well, the, there you go. That's that's a quick way to build an eternity ring. You can experiment with the pro profiles on the curves. You could instance use square profiles instead of the the pipe itself and uh, use a sweep and um, change the position of the claws a bit or maybe make a square seat instead of a round seat uh, you could do this with princess cut diamonds but choices are kind of endless